again. I'd like to welcome to the stage another member of our esteemed spiritual council. Again, for those joining us for the very first time for our center, we've adopted a new policy this year, a new format. We have been graced by amazing voices. Again, multiple voices with one intention. Again, speaks volumes. I am thrilled and honored to present Dr. Will Coleman. I was supposed to do something after this. <sighs> I know we're on camera, but so what? <laughs> uh -oh. Dropped the mic before I spoke. We're good. Stay there. <sighs> Penelope, the jazz trio. Gina, how are you feeling? Those of you I can see, you're looking good. <laughs> it is such an honor to be here in this space, in this place, to speak with you today on conjuring justice. How do we give it feet or what do we do, right? So many different aspects to it. When Dr. David Alden and I were in one of our weekly meetings, you know, we meet from time to time on Fridays, and I think this was about, hmm, probably maybe about a month ago, I uh, shared with him a practice that emerged in the um, African American community once upon a time when Africans were enslaved, they would work from sun up to sundown. And then from sundown to sun up, they would steal away. This is important. They would steal away into the night, into the bush harbor, and they would pray. They would pray for a new reality, a new possibility. And from within what they called the Bush Harbor meetings, they also emerged individuals who were called conjurers. Conjurers. They had taken the European idea of conjuration as mixing elements and transforming through alchemical processes base elements into something that would be new and transformative. So these individuals who were not always literate in the Western way of understanding the literacy, nevertheless, visioned recreations of themselves and of their communities and of the world around them. You hear how I'm saying that? Of themselves, their immediate community, and the world around them. So those individuals were known as conjurers, and they conjured for justice. Now, justice in the Hebrew is zadik. It means righteousness. It means balance. It means equilibrium. And so at the time I mentioned that to Reverend Alt, he said, well, I'd like to use that idea, that theme, may I? I said, sure. And he began, and we began to think about it in terms of various components that you're now experiencing that have been unfolding in this month, in this place, in this space. So on today, I want to take a couple of thoughts that have occurred to me and share it with you of how you put this into action, or let's say continue the action because you're already in the midst of the action, correct? One thought comes from Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, a letter by Paul to a group of people who were becoming Christians. They weren't Christians yet. They were, matter of fact, they were Gentiles. They didn't know anything about the Christos, but they were becoming acquainted with the idea of the Christ consciousness. And in this letter, Paul, among other things, is enjoining them to participate in a certain type of fellowship, koinonia. In verse 25, 
I read one way in the English, and you all know my take on English translations of forgeries, so I'm <laughs> <laughs> got a breast to the side. <laughs> They're forgeries. <laughs> and then go back to the Greek, and I, but I'm not going to read it in Greek. I'm going to read it translated now back into the Hebrew because there's a different nuance even in the Hebrew. So just listen for a moment, and I'll give you some approximations to that, what the Hebrew is saying. This is verse 23. Velohim hashalom hu yikadesh echen bigdushar sheleima vekol ruachim venafshechim vegufchim Yosha mer tamid bevo adonenu Yeshua hamashiach. And here's one possibility. And may the strong one or strong ones of peace, of wholeness, spirit, soul, and body, consecrate you. And here you is plural. Consecrate you completely and may your entire spirit ruach your soul nefesh and your body goof be preserved entirely without blame at the coming or the appearance parousia the appearance of and this is one of Paul's favorite formulas, but I'm going to reinterpret it as well. Of our sovereign living one who heals, saves, and makes whole, comma, the anointed one. You feel that? Your whole nephesh, that connection with the divine, your whole ruach, your whole nephesh, that which animates and your whole body. In the Hebrew, ruach, nephesh, and goof. In the Greek, pneuma, suke, we get the word psyche, soma. In the Latin, spiritus, anima, corpus. Now I'll take one other thought. You know, on Monday nights, I do a pro bono $1,000 an hour class <laughs> <laughs> on Bible and meditation since 2009. And we began working with the, the Science of Mind text. It took us about two years to get through it every Monday night. But in uh, 2015, I decided to focus on the uh, 12 powers. How many are familiar with the 12 powers? by Charles Fillmore, much thinner volume. And I thought we would get through it within a year's time. Well, as to date, this is the third year we have been working with that text. The third year. And I, th I think maybe we will finish this year. Not sure. We've been going line by line, verse by verse. Bringing in scripture, bringing in elements of theosophy, Rosicrucianism, mystical masonry, you name it, we brought it into the reading of the text. And on this particular last Monday, I came across a phrase that has haunted me from the text and from the chapter that's focusing on renunciation and elimination. Is this sentence from Charles Fillmore? Every cell of the body is enveloped in soul or thought and its initial impulse is to conform to the divine natural law. Again, every cell in the body is enveloped in soul or thought and its initial impulse is to conform to the divine natural law. So I googled cells in the body. 37.2 trillion of them. 
at any given time, 37.2 trillion cells in my body, in your body. A whole universe. Uh, that's why they call it the macrocosm. Inside of the body. And I thought about that. In terms of what Genesis says, that um, the Elohim shaped and formed Adam, that's you and me, the human being, male and female, in its their image and in its their likeness, and that it breathed into, this is the second chapter, this being made of earth and mud and blood, the Nefesh Chaya, Nefesh Chaya. Life-giving, life-animating power. And I said, wow. That is literally unpotential power in the image of unlimited power. And each and every individual in this room. Remember I said when I first read that verse, Paul is speaking not to the individual, but to the community. You hear that? So, this is my thought from that. It is that justice, conjuring justice, must begin, be sustained, and endure, and come to completion at the cellular level. Are you listening? Yes. At the cellular level of the individual in concert with other individuals to first and foremost bring forth a dynamic change, transmutation, alchemical realization within him or herself. And then by contagion, by a good germ, by contagion spread abroad. You hear what I'm saying? Because sometimes when we only think about conjuring justice individually, we get into what Martin Luther King called the paralysis of analysis. Let's talk about this thing. Let's have some committee meetings and let's put some ideas together and let's have some snacks along to entertain ourselves while we are probing these very provocative ideas and then let's go home. And what has changed is simply our appetite. Well, it really isn't that simple. We have changed. At the cellular level. But we've not changed consciously. And that's the key. What, er what Ernest Holmes has taught. And also what Charles Fillmore has said. That every cell. Every cell. Has soul. Every cell has. Nephish. Every cell has that. Animating. Dynamic power. And as I talk to my students on Monday night. I talk a lot about the body. Because there's a tendency sometimes in metaphysical circles to focus on spirit separate from body. But spirit is embodied. It's in the body. And the deeper you want to go and the higher you want to go in spirituality, the more you want to do spiritually, the deeper you need to go in the body. So we have a series of exercises on how to reconstitute our body consciously. Especially at nighttime when we're asleep. Or let me put it this way. When we think we're sleeping. The body is resting but the other parts of ourselves are dynamically receiving and acting upon what we have fed it during the day. So now I ask you, brothers and sisters, what are your cells thinking right now? What are your cells thinking right now? Literally. What life force and vitality and power is emanating through your cells consciously? How are you? Participating in the reconstitution of who you have been, are, and will be. How do you talk to your body in such a way that you do justice by it? Did you hear what I just said? I say it, <laughs> in case you didn't. How do you talk to your body in such a way that you do justice by it? And do you listen to the reciprocity 
of what your body says to you about how it's doing, how the organs are doing, how they're feeling, how they are optimized or depleted. Do you re take the time to renew your mind that's in every cell daily? Through the food we eat, is the food unjust? Is the food balanced? Is the food healing? See, I'm trying to talk about there's a way in which injustice is also rooted where? In the sails. The anger, the frustration, the lack of love expressed. It's not rooted just in a mind. It's rooted in the whole being of body, soul, and spirit. So when we do our treatment nightly, we ask ourselves, I do, body, how have I been with you today? What have you been holding for me that I wasn't honest enough to deal with at the moment? Where is this ache coming from that you have located in this place in order to get my attention? And then I said, body, will you forgive me? Can we let this go? And during the night, will you collaborate with me in restoring and healing what's wrong? In the still away place of my sleep, Will you join me in healing us so that on tomorrow we go forth a better person seeking to create a better day? Yes, first and foremost for myself, but by effect for others. And that's why I also said, in every case, the biblical anthropology emphasizes not just the individual, but the community. Your soul, plural. Your, now it's singular, but it's plural. You, you hear that part? Your soul. Your body. Because when the individual spirit, soul, and body is balanced in a process, it's not all at once, then exponentially, the communitarian spirit, soul, and body has no limitations, has no obstacles that it, they cannot overcome. No processes that limit it, they. Because 37.2 trillion cells amplified by everybody who shows up is an unlimited universe of power and transformation. Transformation that, yes, begins in the still away place of maybe we don't know how we ought to do this. Or maybe we feel paralyzed by overwhelming political, social, and economic circumstances around us. But if we harmonize our individual selves as a process and bring those individual selves together, there's absolutely nothing that can limit us or hold us back from actualizing the vision that we hold collectively. Only a particular community can determine what that vision is. But once you determine what it is, then day by day, and more importantly, night by night, 
in your own prayer space, in your own restorative space, in the deep part of your consciousness and in your body. You're going to make it happen. In another place in Science of Mind and in the 12 Powers and in the Master Key System, I'm just reciting some of the books we've studied over the past five years. If you can see it, if you can feel it, when you see it, it's going to happen. It doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. You hear what I just said? If you can see it, if you can feel it, when you speak it, and let's be clear now, speaking is a verb. Speaking in the biblical context is action. Speaking has feet and arms. You hear me? It's not an idea. Again, when you can see it, and when you can feel it, love, you can feel the love. And the word for love means to cleave. So when you love it, you, you got it. It's got you too, but you got it. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? And you can see it. And when you and the vision grab hold of each other, the conjuration for justice, and then you speak it with speech, feet, making up a phrase, speech, feet, Y'all can say it to each other for now. I'm going to speak to feet this. <laughs> it's going to happen. It has to happen. And then Paul concludes this blessing. And I didn't say it at the beginning, but these last words from uh, in Thessalonians, they're a blessing. They're a good word, good speech for this community. A community that's divided. A community that has its limitations. A community that has its frustrations. We all know about those communities, don't we? And how do we know about those communities? Because we know our own selves, the first community, he gives them the good word. The good word is, I, I pray, and then he turns around later on in the text and asks them to pray for him too. Mutuality in prayer. I pray that your dynamic connection with the I am, I have been, I am, I will be, I pray that everything that animates you and makes you alive and gives you all your aspirations and gives you the energy to strive to fulfill those aspirations. And I pray that your body that has to get it done will be sanctified, consecrated, not partially, but completely. <coughs> and that you will be blameless without spot clear in conscience when our sovereign and he's not talking about way out there for him is imminent and for those of us who believe in a Christ consciousness he's saying the same thing it's imminent and really it's imminent to the extent that you bring it home the second coming is when you bring it home the second coming is when you realize it that's when the return has happened when it happens inside of you that you will be blameless at, the, at, the, at the, the appearance, the manifestation of our sovereign. That means unlimited. Every Hebrew prayer begins, Blessed are you, living one, our strong one, sovereign of time and space. And the sovereignty of time and space is in the individual and in the community. So Paul is saying, when our sovereign one, and we see the word Jesus, but it doesn't mean Jesus in the common sense. If you understand it esoterically, the word Jesus means the living power that heals. The living power that saves. The living power that transforms. The living power that makes whole. The appearance of our sovereign living power comma, the anointed one. To be a Christian, Christianos, means to be anointed. To be infused, activated, 
motivated and inspired to do unto others as you would do for yourself. And by the way, and I'm going to wrap it up here, that brings me to another thought. When the rich young ruler comes to Jesus and says, what must I do in order to enter into the kingdom? He said, well, you know the commandments. Love the living strong with all of your heart, your might, your mind. I got that. And then love who? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. We missed this part. Love yourself first. Love yourself deeply. Love yourself profoundly. And you can't help but love your neighbor the same way. And that, beloved, is all I got to say at this time. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Alt, and I simply want to say thanks. Thanks for taking the time to watch our broadcast here at Spiritual Living Center of Atlanta. We have a vision, and that vision is to reawaken all to their spiritual magnificence. And one of the ways that we are able to do that is through this very medium of broadcasting. So if you got anything out of this, if you felt in any way inspired or if something spoke to you directly, then I extend an invitation to you to become a part of our family by donating. And there are many ways in order for you to be able to do that. One is to simply go to our website at slca.com and there you will find all different kinds of prompts that will help you support what it is that we are doing here in Atlanta. One way is to become a pledger. That means that you decide on a monthly basis that you are going to help us with this vision. Another way is to donate through our management system called Fellowship One, another through PayPal, and another even easier way is on your cell phone. You can do what's called text to tithe, and that number is 404 seven nine six seven zero three zero again thank you so much for your support and i invite you to come back weekly to see what it is that we're up to blessings <laughs>